What up guys, it's me Jules here for whatculture.com, joined as ever by Scott, Hi. and we've got some news. And that can only mean one thing, time for that jingle. Hot dang, this news, give it all you got, I guess it's time for Jules and Scott! Yes, we're back, and there is more news to be done. Ugh. And today's news is EA and Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront again. But this is because this Rolling Stone has gathered no moss <laughs> and has picked up a lot of stragglers it's on the way. It's taken out a few villages on the way. Uh, still it, going. It's like the video game Rock of Ages. It it's is. It's literally like just destroying everything on a path of destruction. Oh. But basically, what's going on now is that EA is starting to lose quite a lot of money. Now, oh, yeah. we already knew that Star Wars Battlefront 2 was down 60% on Star Wars Battlefront that came out in 2015. Yep, that's risen to 61% now. Yep, and they have now said that this is actually having a knock-on effect to their investors mm -hmm. and their market share and basically the stock of their company. Yep. Predictions have come out saying that they have lost $3.1 billion. Dollars. Yeah. It's That's nearly enough to build one part chamber of a secondary reactor on a tertiary <laughs> subsystem like, of a Death Where Star. are you going with this? Like a Dubai island? It could be anything. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, their stock is apparently down 8.5% as a whole bunch of investors <laughs> reacted to Blake Jorgensen doing this big talk, mm -hmm. um, trying to reassure them as to like, because initially they said, hey, we've taken the microtransactions out, but it won't affect our bottom line. That was what led to us being like... Laughing our asses off, because yes, it will. Because either you're yeah. lying about one thing to them, or you're lying to us that microtransactions aren't a huge part yeah, of your Yeah, and so you clearly model. admitted that there's this optional thing that's mm. clearly geared towards greed, whatever. And then the days rolled on. They didn't seem to know what the hell they were doing. And the game itself has remained with a typo on the main menu and doesn't seem like it's been touched for a bit. Yeah. As, you know, whatever. And now we're at this stage where all the investors are like, you know what, we don't care, we're away, we're, get, we're done. 8%, 8.5% yeah. is a huge amount if you um, in the business world. But this is the thing. Money is the only thing that EA or companies like EA mm. seems to understand. And as much as we can give them credit for trying to fix a game, it was their decision to release it in the state that it is. Like, mm -hmm. there is no point lambasting a company more so than they are trying to fix it. However, this is... Sorry on fire. Yeah, right, yeah, they are. They are now. That's, this has pushed them to release some uh, content, which we expected to be in the game to begin with. By the way, well, that was the thing because like Overwatch is the way Overwatch does. We should probably explain. They are adding in uh, customization for armor parts yes. and and heads and races and things. like Although that, that hasn't been um, said officially yet, it's been leaked. leaked. Um, so data miners basically went into the code and somehow found that somehow there's something in there that, that shows the cosmetics. We can show you guys on the screen anyway. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there are some clips out there showing that new armor customization parts. It's all trooper based. It's not um, skins for the heroes yeah. yet. I mean, um, I was disappointed. I was disappointed um, mm -hmm. when I found that they weren't already included in the game because they were in Star Wars Battlefront One. Yeah. So I was a bit, I was very confused about that. Well, that was the thing because um, that's the thing. One of the biggest reasons that people got so annoyed about this is obviously the mm -hmm. pay-to-win thing. But the way that Overwatch does um, loot boxes is everything cosmetic. is cosmetic, yeah. and it's like if you're going to do this, one of the more palatable ways to do it is to put everything cosmetic. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's what they've done. They've kind of relented and they're working on this big cosmetic thing, yeah. which I don't actually think is going to drop till we're near the Last Jedi. But you well, know. I mean, the thing is, is that a lot of people had mentioned how quickly. They're, they're rolling out these updates, how mm. quickly they're changing the model. Mm -hmm. And it either like pangs of a company that's on the back foot and is trying to put out this house fire, <laughs> or it's basically they realize that they need to make as much money as possible, or they need to repair what mm. the damage has done, and they need to almost hit that sweet spot of releasing it around the same time as The Last Jedi. Well, I think that's what they're going to be building back mm. up to. Because, I mean, it's weird, because it, I would usually with these sort of things, these sort of behind-the-scenes rumblings or things that the gaming industry gets really annoyed about, mm. usually they don't penetrate the mainstream. And no, something but this, like... But this has been taken up as a scapegoat, really, hasn't yeah. it? Like, this, this is... EA has become a pariah. Mm -hmm. for, for, for better or worse, like, the thing that worries me the most about situations like this mm. isn't how this might affect the gaming industry as a whole because I do want there to be change like this. I think yeah. this is a good thing that loot boxes should be mm -hmm. only cosmetic. They should only be like that. Or just gotten rid of. But the thing that worries me is what does this mean for the future of Battlefront? And well, what's it, I mean, uh, EA is not going to fold over this. 3.1 billion is a hell of a lot of money, but yes. they are probably not going to fold. They can they, take the hit. They, they can take this hit because they'll recoup it in other ways. And the other, there's also the fact that uh, another part of that big speech was them saying we're not abandoning microtransactions. They said yeah. that they're analysing the market, they're seeing where people want to, they want to try and analyse where people can spend money, where it's going to be, you know, where they can put these systems back in. So yeah, they're not going to abandon their biggest um, profitable thing. I mean, they analyse themselves. But the problem is, is that they they put a lot of their games have been centred around this loop box yes. mechanic. Now, this is effectively telling them to reshape their game core. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing, mm -hmm. but I wonder 
will we start seeing a drop in quality in the games as they try to maybe put more out to try and cover up the shortfall of there not being anything? They'll just be like, oh, let's just buy up a load of studios and get them to release half ass games. <laughs> and let's kill them all again. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's always a thing of where do they go from here? Well, I mean, I, I did an article on like uh, a lot of things that have happened this year that have changed the industry going mm -hmm, forward. Mm -hmm. And like one of the biggest that no one is talking about because one of the things that EA keeps saying is like, oh, it costs us way too much to make games. Production costs are so high that no we No one asked them to, to spend that amount on no, those games, by the way. They didn't. And if you look at something like Hellblade, Ninja Theory proved that you don't have to go all out. You can make mm. a game that rivals the AAA production wise, and but it is on a budget. It, they, that game only needed to make about 300,000 copies to break even, mm -hmm. which is a demonstrably less amount than Battlefront. And it's like, there are ways to do this. You don't have to go all out with these huge games. There are ways to do games that people will buy. Like Lost Legacy proved you can do it a budget Uncharted. Yeah. There are X many ways that you can do this sort of thing. I mean, I remember being absolutely disgusted when I read that Square Enix was uh, disappointed that they considered Tomb Raider to be a failure because yeah. it didn't sell a million copies or something like that. It's like, well, maybe if you put less money into the production thing, you wouldn't have made yeah. it so... Like, uh, anyway, that's a, di that's a different topic for another day. <laughs> so, basically, so basically, this is what the crux is. We have EA, a company that's scrambling to protect one of, mo I would say, many people's childhood... Oh like, God, like, things like, it's, it is a huge thing. You've got Jesus. one of the biggest franchises owned by one of the biggest gaming publishers. You would have think that this would be a, a surefire hit. It should have been. But the people have spoken. They've spoken with their <laughs> wallets. And that's the best thing that you can do. You can type Ugh. as many comments as you want in the uh, in areas around the internet, mm -hmm. but actually saying, no, I'm not going to buy this, is much more powerful to the company. And I remember that being the ground sold back in 2015. Everyone was like, boycott this game. It was like mm -hmm. a $60 season pass, and there mm -hmm. was a, there was a, like a, a ground swell of activism behind that. But it obviously didn't really take off that much, being the fact that that game still sold millions mm -hmm. and millions of mm -hmm. copies. But we've seen that now, that a lot of people have gone, you know what, I'm fine. And it, it reminds me of the Xbox One release in 2013. Yeah, like, people just were like, yeah. Yeah, and it, it totally, like, it weirdly got contorted into the mainstream. Like, I, I <laughs> overheard someone like, talking in a local game shop, and mm. they were like, oh, so I think, like, EA demand your credit card details, and then they just take money from you every time you get a microtransaction, or every time you want to, like, look at a prompt for a right, microtransaction. Okay. And it's like, no, that's not uh, how yeah, it happens, yeah. but I'm glad you think that, because that's going to prevent, like, whatever. I don't even know how they come back from that, you know, like, the mm. future of Battlefront or whatever. Um, I mean, it's, it's not like there's two versions from across the 2000s that sold really well and were absolutely beloved. Uh, and that didn't have microtransaction systems in at all. It's yeah. not like they exist. You know what else they have Is as it? well? Go yeah, on. they had Galactic Conquest in. That was mm. one of my favorite game modes of all time. There's, there's, there are a million ways to do this. Let's just... Let's just take a step back. <laughs> the game itself, when you're actually playing with it, it's, it's fine. Absolute, oh God, I, I, I'm, I'm actually having a, a quite a fun time on it. I'm not saying that you should go out and buy it because, no. again, we got free press copies. There's a difference for it. Yes. But the issue is, is that I realise that there is an abundance of bad business practices about this game. Yet, because of the absolute fury that the internet has met it with, mm -hmm. we're seeing a game that is actually changing for the better. And hopefully, the rest of the industry has to take note. Now, there's more discussion about the industry becoming self-regulatory as well. Yes. That they're actually going to say, well, before the government gets in on this and weighs in about whether it's gambling and things like that, mm -hmm. maybe we should form a self-regulatory um, committee, mm -hmm. similar to the ESRB. Now, mm -hmm. that's an interesting prospect. However, there are flaws with that. If you get something that is self-regulated, it means that there are ways of you know, manipulating the system to allow this sort of practices to continue. Yes. Um, they might say, oh, it's not gambling because we've said it's not gambling. Yeah, and you know you, what I mean? If you look around the world, like there are all sorts of ways that different mm. companies and states get away with gambling. Yeah. It, 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 that, that's a whole can of worms. So, but, so, so we are going down like two paths. We're either yeah. going to see that the, uh, the government's going to get in there, that the mainstream media is going to chase this up and basically use um, EA and Star Wars Battlefront 2 as an example to say the business practices of the industry needs to get better mm -hmm. or we're going to see that a little committee is going to pop up let's face it probably going to be backed by EA and funded by them by, because that's what happens with the ESRB as well mm -hmm. like there's people who self-fund that then they will say no nah, it's not gambling it's fine and we won't <laughs> see the industry change as much as we want I want to see change I, I, see, I always want to see change yeah I'm, I'm yeah I'm game for change mm. I think that this is the tipping point I don't necessarily think it's a straw that broke the camel's back I think it's more just a leaden downward axe kick or something that's just like, by the way, this is a problem and we need to build it back up again. But you look at games like Overwatch doing the microtransaction thing in a more palatable, better way or whatever. Mm. It's just that Star Wars shouldn't be associated with a pay-to-win mentality and pay-to-win mentalities have no 
place in a full mm. price game. Mm. That's that's the crux of the whole issue. Mm. Like there are mm. ways to do this. There are ways to maintain their business models as long as you flag them ahead of time. There's totally a way to do the version of Battlefront 2 that we have if it was free to play. Yeah, I mean, like, let us know what you think about this, by the way, because it's always good to have a bit of discourse between ourselves and you. Yeah. Would you be accepting if it was just aesthetically customization loot boxes? Because I think that that's the thing that we would yeah. agree with, similar to the Overwatch thing. Mm -hmm. Let us know how you found it as well, if you played the game, and also if you have bought loot boxes, how you found the experience. Because, and like, again, we haven't really heard many people actually from their things no, saying, I've think... actually sunk a lot of money into no. it. Let us know if you think the EA is flagging or whether or not it's going to do some crafty stuff to stay afloat. And as always, I've been Jules. I've been Scott. You've been awesome. And we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Aren't you a star? Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe below. And also there's probably more content flowing up above my head. So why not check that out as well? Could be a laugh. Probably. Six out of ten. Thank you.